DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our Thursday night running your DJ business. I didn't want to say because How you Brian's doing, Tony? There. Doing well. Aloha. Aloha. Do you like my view? Oh, my goodness. Look at that I like, view. I like that view. It's, that view. Uh, it's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> so for those of you um, that are wondering who Tony is, uh, we've already dumped Brian Bonacici. We've was uh, We've replaced him with the uh, Asian persuasion. And so, uh, no, uh, as you guys may know, uh, we are very lucky to have our man, um, Brian, who is a internationally now touring mobile DJ, and he is everywhere. Yep. He is in, I don't I can never say the name of the country correctly. Do you know how to say it correctly? Or are you just as bad as I am that way? It's like I don't even know what it is. Turcos. My wife knew the name. I was like, I've never heard of the place. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's somewhere warm and toasty. The only challenge is he is in a uh, he's in a tighter uh, space, and the problem is that uh, somebody actually cut the line, the main line to the power of the whole island. Yep. While he was DJing, and so he was shot down. They got the power back on, but apparently the internet is down. So he is, uh, he's not with us tonight. So it's just me and Tony and, uh, that's that. So, uh, Tony, I'm going to go ahead and let you introduce yourself to our viewers since, um, you know, probably not a lot of them, uh, know who you are and, and what you're at. And we're going to talk to Tony about his story and, and what his deal is and, and uh, how he's built his business. So, fire away, my friend. All right, I'm Tony So. I live in Hawaii, uh, the main island, which is Oahu. Uh, moved here about 2003. Uh, my company name is The DJ Hawaii. So, if you go to The DJ Hawaii or at Instagram at The DJ Hawaii, T H E D J Hawaii, um, that's how I, I got myself started um, and try to you know make my way. Uh, from Guam. I'm originally from Guam. Nice. So I, I started in Guam and, um, you know, did some work out there. And then, um, my wife was deployed to Hawaii in around 2003 after nine 11. And I, you know, we decided to come out here and then her plans changed. And I decided that we, you know, as a family we would stay out here and, you know, make the best of what we can. And here I am today. Very cool. So, so how did, how did you get the, the DJ bug? What happened? How did you get into it? What what made you say, I'm going to forego making a real living and I'm going to be a DJ instead and disappoint your mother? <laughs> yeah, that's actually a good uh, question. Uh, when I uh, was young, uh, I went to a private school and I, I just loved playing music. So I, back then I had two double deck cassette players and okay. I, I wasn't trying to mix. I was just trying you're to showing your music age off. just to let you know. Yes. I you're now that's told fine. everybody you're over the age of 30. Yes, I am. But uh uh, what happens? Uh, what what happened was I was at an event, and then at the end of the night, after playing uh, music, uh, the mother of uh, my friend came on. She goes, "Oh, how much money do I owe you?" And I'm like, "Oh, what?" 
And she goes, you've been playing music all night. I have to pay you. She goes, what is it? Do you want me to pay you $75 an hour? Do you want me to pay you $75 per hour? What do you want? And I was, I think I was only 12. And I said, um, $75. And she's like, the whole night? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> she wrote me a check. And that's where I showed my mom. And she was like, that's too much money. You have to return it. But wow. that's how I discovered it. Yeah. And then um, uh, the first chance that I ever got from um, uh, to perform, um, you know, officially was at my sister's birthday party. Uh, she couldn't afford a DJ back then. The DJ oh, charged 100. your sister. No, you I didn't. Your sister. <laughs> nice brother. <laughs> nice brother. I didn't. But uh, mm -hmm. back then, I, I remember the price that the the DJ quoted her was one hundred fifty dollars, and uh, for kids that are sixteen years old, that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So I said I could do it. She believed in me, and and uh, you know I I got a chance to uh, play for a party, and you know. The rest is history. I uh, hear, you know, nice. uh, my sister, yeah, my sister passed away in 2010. Oh, and I'll tell sorry. you a story. She passed away in 2010. Before she passed away, um, I was just about to leave the, ho the hospital. And as I was walking out, she grabbed my arm. Um, she said to me, she goes, you will not, you, you promised me one thing because she knew that because she, she lived in LA and I <laughs> lived in Hawaii when I, when I went to visit her. Mm -hmm. And she said, promise me one thing that you don't let any of your brides down. Uh, if I pass away, uh, you know, take care of your brides. Uh, you, you'll eventually see my sons and my husband, but don't let them down. I said, yeah, okay. And as I walked away, she grabbed me and she goes, you make me a promise that you will do this for the rest of your life. And that hit me so hard because uh, when she passed away, she passed away on a Sunday. Mm. Uh, that, that very same weekend, because I, I had to rush back home, do a wedding on a Friday, Saturday, and then she passed away on Sunday uh, afternoon. And the, the ironic thing about it was when she passed away, it was during the ceremony. And during that ceremony, it was the mom and the bride walking down. And I couldn't understand what was going on. And then I, later in the evening, at the end of the night, the bride said that her, her father had passed three months prior. And wow. she just never made mention. So her mom had the honor you know, to do that. So, mm. so I do this with, um, with passion. I, I love what I do. <laughs> Uh, I do it and I dedicate it to those, you know, that uh, have gone before me, you know, uh, whether it be my sister or friends that uh, really love DJing, you know, I realize that we are, we are blessed to, to do what we do and, you know, to make you know, a good living out of it. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's an amazing <laughs> story, man. That is, that is fantastic. You're a good dude. Um, <clears throat> so so you started DJing in Guam, mm -hmm. and then you started with cassette tape decks, and then did you ever work for like a multi-op? Did you, like, how did you, what was your transition? Uh, tra I, I think uh, the transition out here to Hawaii, one thing I, you know, coming from Guam, I always thought like, okay, there's got to be better DJs in Hawaii because, you know, it's, it's a state, you know. I come from an island that's mm -hmm. a U.S. territory, so to right. me... Um, but what I learned is that the people in Guam are so passionate about what they do. They work hard. They, even if they're not good at what they do, they're going to keep working until they get really good at it. So okay. I feel that, um, um, practice, you know, makes perfect. And that's, I think what I did is I had lots of, um, performance time in front of people, you know, so okay. that helped a lot. Great. Good, good, good. So you went from, so you never worked for multi-app. You just kind of organically learned and kind of went from there. Where did you get most of your schooling? Uh, as far as the DJ education? Yeah. yeah. I think it, it was uh, a lot of it was trial and error. You know, they didn't have a lot of these shows prior and they did have the shows prior, but living on Guam, it was expensive to go to places like mobile beat or um, nightclub and bar. Any of those events that they had was expensive right. coming from Guam. I, I mean, if you go right now on Google, and say from California, uh, you look at the ticket prices to Guam, mm -hmm. you'll be, you will be blown away on how much the airlines have a monopoly on Guam. Really? A U.S. territory. It's crazy. Hmm. It's like going to London. Okay. Yeah. So, so you've, uh, you've been to some conventions before? <clears throat> uh, I've been to a, a, a couple of conventions. Oh, it's raining a little bit here. You start to see the, let me adjust here. 
Oh yeah, what a uh, horrible place to live. It's starting oh, to yeah. rain. <laughs> Terrible. I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I've been to a couple of conventions. Um, I I nowadays I attend NAM, which is the one in okay. uh, Anaheim. Um, I used to attend uh, Mobile Beat, but just haven't had the interest to to attend a show. You know, in the last four years, I think. Okay. I I've, I've uh, also went to Wedding NBA once. Sure. And then after that, I. Um, haven't been really um, doing too many shows. After okay. That. So we've kind of you've developed, and now your wife got um, uh, stationed in Hawaii. Terrible mm-hmm. place to live, and so, so uh, yeah. you had to start all over again. So, yeah. how did you start? What makes you significantly different than any of your competitors? And what makes what makes Tony stand out? Oh uh, gosh, I um, I think a lot of it is is just I, I, a lot of it is going to be definitely personality, but at the same time, um, you know, you got to know the right people in the industry. Uh, you got to service the right people in the industry. Like you know, like a lot of people think, um, oh, I know the banquet captain at, uh, at let's say at the Four Seasons. You know, they're mm-hmm. I'm really good friends with the banquet captain, but the banquet captain is not the one who makes the decisions as far as like determining the sales like if a client calls up you want to be able to work with the, the person who picks up the phone and is talking to the customer which is the bride and groom mm-hmm. right that's the person you want to know because that's the person that could say oh i know a dj a perfect dj for you right? so the catering sales manager yeah, and now i think manager. we talked a couple of days ago the majority of your business though is long distance like you're a destination yeah, yeah. So what percentage of your business is destination Versus local, uh, destination is <clears throat> about 95 percent. Okay, and, I, and I'm lucky to get uh, local weddings. If I, you know, I get, I'll get a few, but I can, I can count in one hand how many local weddings. And those local weddings are probably like three hundred to five hundred people. But that's really rare for me. I do a lot of the destination, and, and you know, a lot of that's because uh, when you're, when the people that depend on you a lot, whether it be the Four Seasons. Uh, Disney, Alani out here, <clears throat> or Marriott, um, they're going to always be feeding you uh, opportunity. So at the end of the day, you're, all, you're mostly working with the, their clientele, which is destination. Gotcha. Where, where you might be able to focus, if you're focused on a local hotel that does a lot of local weddings, mm-hmm. then that's what you're going to get. You're going to get a lot of local weddings. <clears throat> Got it. So, so you deal more with like the international destinations, yes. more the full service resorts. Yes. Okay. Exactly. And do they just refer you, or do you work on a wholesale? Like our friend Jody, who's tuned in here somewhere, or she was anyway. Mm-hmm. Okay. She works yeah. with Caesars uh, Resorts, and they and uh, my friend J.R. Silva works for mm-hmm. um, Disney, and so they work on a wholesale level, and they essentially most of the time they're being booked by the actual. Um, yeah. catering sales manager or there's like a an in-house event planner that takes care of it. Absolutely, yeah. So you do it that way or uh, do you deal with the client directly? Uh, I have the best of both worlds. Um, okay. I, I, I don't want this this uh, interview to like incriminate me, but at the same time, I have the best of both worlds where the what I love about Oahu is the hotels are very fair. So if the client um, heard about me and they want to hire me, um, the hotel doesn't get in the way. They don't turn around and say like, hey, since they're booking with us, you need to have them be on our BEO, which is the banquet events order. Sure. Uh, you know, they, <clears throat> if I find the lead or the customer comes to me, they don't even worry about it because they're more um, appreciative that I'm going to be at their hotel and that uh, I've taken away uh, one less worries for them to worry about. So uh, okay. I have that right out here. Yeah, so. Gotcha. So then are you a member of like the local wedding associations? Uh, is there a NACE chapter out there or an ILEA chapter? Or are you just a guy knocking on doors and grinding away? Um, in, my mind, I'm a, <clears throat> in, in my mind, I'm a member of all those organizations. But okay. uh, I, I pretty much what I did was um, I believe this is I wanted to create my own platform. So I created a website. It's not the best website right now because I kind of like reset the website. It's called Hawaii Wedding Pros. So if you look that up, hawaiiweddingpros.com, it's a okay. website that I created. And it was kind of my platform. And that was kind of like the NACE, 
the other like uh, as associations that are out here. But it was just a bunch of good vendors that I said, hey, uh, if you'd like to be a part of this, you know, if you know, if you would like to be a part of it, you know, please join us. And and it worked really nice. I I, I produce um, wedding showcases for hotels, like uh, you know, out here. So that's one of my things that I do as well to kind of like build my own opportunities, which is basically another word for platform. Uh, because okay. if I don't, if I don't do that, if I don't advertise, if I don't advertise on Yelp, if I don't advertise on the Knot, if I don't advertise on Wedding Wire, nobody's gonna see me at all, right? So, so a lot of your business does come from that. Um, no, <clears throat> um, a lot of my business comes from word of mouth and referrals from. Um, from the hotels, but Got at the it. same time, uh, the smartest thing I ever did, and hopefully people can pick up on this, is when I, when I chose my company, the name for my company, it wasn't because I was trying to be clever and trying to beat Google Analytics. What happened was uh, in Hawaii, if you look up Hawaii uh, bus transportation system, mm -hmm. the, bus tra the name of the company that runs it is called The Bus. Okay. So I took that concept and I carried it over <clears> and created the DJ. So on a local level, my marketing and association with the bus is very close. So if you go to my website, you'll see the logo and you compare it to the, the transportation system, which is called the bus. That's how I got the concept, the idea. Got it. And okay. then the people, so, and, and here's the good news. <clears throat> I got a call from Google and they were like saying, you can't do that. And I'm like, do what? And they're like, you can't be using that name because that's, those are key words to a search engine. And I said, wait, that's my company name. And they couldn't understand what I was trying to explain to them. So I, I referred them to the website and the lady on the website, was, uh, on the other line, she's like, oh my goodness, you are one clever guy. Let me just tell you something. You will never have to pay Google for any advertising ever again. I was like, wow. You. Yeah, so. There you go. Yeah, because I, uh, if you look up <clears throat> you're looking for a DJ in Hawaii, you're going to type in Hawaii DJ or DJ Hawaii. And I'm always going to be on the first page gotcha. you know, on Google, that, uh, at least in Google. You know. Very good. So, yeah. so Jody Harris wants you to know there is a NACE chapter in Hawaii yes. and she is an avid NACE uh, professional. So you may want to check it out or else you're going to suffer her wrath. Okay. She wants to know is what is Hawaii wedding pros free for Hawaii? Oh, yeah. Wedding pros? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely free. It's it it's nothing serious. It's it's something fun that I I put together. Um, you know, the beauty of my uh, so-called organization or website is when I throw parties, it's the people from the Four Seasons that's coming, the Disney Alani. <coughs> it's the people that work the hotels that are coming to my events. The the sales reps, the catering manager, the GM. You know, the uh, the sales and marketing guy. You know. Gotcha. So that's the difference. Yeah. She also wants to know if you know the actor Alex O'Loughlin, who plays Steve McGarrett on the uh, TV show Hawaii Five O. No, I don't. <laughs> I see them. Okay. I see them around. I see them <clears throat> around. Um, I'll even see them at church. They're, they they they'll come in and they'll walk in together as a group uh, at mm. church. So uh, out here in Hawaii, we're 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 taught not to to go up to people like that, you know? So we're, you know, even though we know it's them, we're, we're going to, we're just going to act like they're normal people. Cause they are normal people. They Absolutely, just yeah. do something different than us for exactly. a living. Yep. So, <clears throat> well, if you ever need to know anybody in Vegas, just like how, you know, she assumed, you know, everybody in Hawaii, um, <laughs> she must know everybody in Vegas. So if you ever awesome. want to meet Wayne Newton, she's your girl. Oh, okay. My goodness. <laughs> Okay. Um, so she wants to know how many weddings a year do you do? Cause you're an independent. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So how many weddings are you, uh, does you, are you producing? I, I average about a hundred weddings a year. Okay. Much. Yeah. That's but it's a lot for an independent. Yeah, it's a lot for me. Um, so yeah, that's a lot for me. And, um, I'm, I'm truly honored when I do the, the weddings because I, I know there's other brides that wanted to hire me, but, I'm, you know, I usually book like six to a year out. So, so like today we're actually at, um, uh, behind this property, they're having a wedding showcase starting at five thirty today. So I'll be talking in front of 200 brides today. 
Gotcha. Yeah, so now you'll be yeah. talking to 200 local brides. Uh, this is local. Yeah. But see, okay. I attend this. I, I don't, I come to this show to educate. I don't come here to try to hire anybody or book anybody rather. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm here just to educate, you know, and let them know what's available. And the other DJs that are here, I encourage them to book them because, um, you know, if I book something here, it's because the bride wants to use my services. But mm -hmm. uh, my mindset is I'm here <clears throat> to educate and help the DJs have a voice at these events because usually it's the wedding planner that has the voice, the florist telling people how great their flowers are. And then right. before you know it, the, the DJ's budget is like, I only have 500 bucks for you. It's like, that sucks. You know yeah. what I mean? So I, I designed this show where I could speak and be the voice for the DJs and entertainment okay. so that they're prioritized to the top of the list. So you actually give a, is it, do you actually give a suggested price point for, uh, for brides to spend on their wedding? Not a um, DJ? Or do you just I, talk about things to look for? Yeah, things to look for. Okay. Uh, you know, because to me, you know, price is, I think is subjective. You know what I mean? Uh, somebody could charge $5,000, but they're not worth $5,000. I mean, it's all Brian, you said that about him. Don't tell him that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> or somebody could be a thousand bucks, but they're worth $10,000. You know what I mean? Right. But they don't know their, they don't know their value. And that's where they, that's where they need to understand that if you're going to do a career like this, you got to love it and you got to respect it because you're, you have to steward something that there's no defined margins. You know, there's no defined margins. Nobody tells you that you, Oh, you can only make 500 bucks as a DJ. Heck no. You can make $150,000 a night. You can make $50,000 a night. You can make $5,000 a night, or you could right. be in Vegas and make, you know, the headliner show and make some good money there too. But you you're know? no longer a mobile DJ. Then you've shifted to the, Club yeah, exactly. remixing world. So, but, but yeah, so. that's what I'm trying to share. Is like, you know, but yeah. Um, there's no question that life is yeah. is endless possibilities. Every day is just whatever you choose to make it to be. So it yeah, starts with your attitude. So, yes. so there's that. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. So I, I got. Yeah, that's really what it is. I, what I love about Hawaii too is the fact that. Um, you know, like Brian, he travels everywhere. He's going to Italy. He's going to New York. He's going to California. I get to sleep on, I get, yeah, I get to sleep in my bed after I do my gig. I get to come home. Yeah. I get to hug my daughter. I get to <coughs> hug my, my kids. I get to hug my wife, you know, that's a good gotcha. feeling. I used to, I used to tour the Japan circuit in Tokyo. So I know how it feels to, to, to travel. Really? Uh, and it was brutal, man. It's not fun. Tour hmm. DJs they're they're it's not as glamorous as people think it is yeah it's Tiesto brutal. looks like he's in pain oh yeah Tiesto because looks unhappy at the end of the night when they you get a hundred thousand dollars a year or a night a night is brutal, brutal. but he's still uh -huh. good you know it, it to each his own you know what i mean <laughs> i hear you yeah. so david's got a question for you tony yeah. what is networking like with other djs in hawaii is it very clicky is it uh, pretty warm and inviting um it's it's very unique uh i think there's a few of us that are that we get along but i you know there there's some djs are very competitive but they don't show it i mean they're they're pretty polite about it they don't um i don't think it's clickish uh they're friendly that's all i can say okay. um yeah as far as like djs are there's really no big dj network because i think it's it's such a small island that people are competitive but like i'll be friends with a few djs and i'll refer them um okay. but i don't i don't try to be friends with everybody because um i i try to target my um my clientele and i don't want to be like referring <coughs> any kind of DJ, you know to do you know every dj is created differently so uh, you know i can't just say oh, okay just hire this guy you know gotcha you, you gotta kind of match them all right let's shift for a minute all right. Okay. Yeah. Did you, watch, did you watch the Oscars on Sunday night? A little bit. A little Not bit. Not too much. Yeah. Okay. My question for you is with the why. <clears throat> the why? The why? So why didn't you watch the Oscars on Sunday? Oh, why didn't I watch it? Um, There's no wrong answer. Well, did, it, did it fall on a Sunday? <clears throat> 
It fell on a Sunday. It was Sunday yeah. night. Yeah. So that that's all because I mean, for me, um, that has been a tradition growing up. And to me, growing up as a little kid, Sundays was depressing. So I stay away from stuff that make me feel depressed. And and, and the Oscars that celebrate the arts it depresses you. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> it falls on a Sunday. That's it. Is that something it? Ab- something about it. I don't know. It just Jimmy Kimmel as the host might depress you he instead was, of make you laugh. Uh, he was he was pretty good. I saw a little bit of it, and I I like his his delivery was nice. But okay. I, I don't think I was really interested because a lot of the movies that were they were even announcing, I was like, never heard of it. Okay, didn't watch it. Yeah. Well, here's the reason I bring it up. <clears throat> Once again, the Oscars they're down in ratings. And gotcha. there's a lot of people that are saying, you know, well, it's the same old, same old. And some people are saying it's because of politics. Some people are saying it's because the uh, a lot of like yourself, you haven't seen a lot of the movies, so you don't have a lot of interest. <clears throat> and that Hollywood is producing movies that are specifically just to win Oscars. They don't care about box office draw or what have you. But mm-hmm. <clears throat> where I'm bringing it up is. I see a lot of correlation between the Oscars, quite honestly, and mobile DJs. Because as much as everybody says they're different, I'm redefining the DJ. I'm redefining the way the brides look at DJs. I'm redefining this. They're, they're kind of doing the same thing over and over and over again. And I think the Oscars is a perfect example that if you're doing the same thing over and over and over again as a DJ, and all you're doing is swapping out the new Bruno Mars song for the now played out Justin Timberlake song. Are you, yeah. are you really doing anything different, you know, <clears throat> or are you just doing the same thing over and over again and selling yourself as though you're new in your hip, you know, you yeah. bought a new suit. Okay. It's like putting a new coat of paint on the same old car. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yep. So, <clears throat> so what do you do to keep yourself fresh keep yourself different and keep yourself from not being the Oscars? Oh gosh, that's a really good question. Well, I'm uh, a really smart guy and that's why I asked the really good questions. Yeah. Good for you, man. <laughs> oh gosh. I, I, you know, here in Hawaii, if you do sometimes doing too much, sometimes could hurt you. You know what I mean? If you, and doing too much meaning like, Oh, I am always on social media. You know, I'm on top of my Facebook. I'm on top of my website. I'm on top of marketing. I'm on all the expos. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm out networking with everybody. Sometimes too much. It's just like film. If you overexpose film, it's ruined, right? right. So I, I truly believe um, <clears throat> you, have to, you have to pace yourself in this world where it's fast. I mean, this yeah. world is so quick that you got to pace yourself because it's a marathon that we're, we're running. And if you, if you sprint in the front end, you're going to die out before you even make your, you, you meet, you reach your peak as a professional DJ, you're going to be burnt out. So I try to stay fresh. Um, I, appearance is important to me. Uh, I work out a lot. I do CrossFit. Um, okay. I don't have the best diet, but I, you know, I make sure that I work out. Um, I put some time into my workouts um, okay, but here's my here's my question. What about your performance is different? What what would you say if I looked at a video of you today from the wedding you did on Saturday compared uh-huh. to the wedding you did three years ago? What would you tell me is different? Because let's face it, if you look at the Oscars as an example, yeah. the only difference is you've got Jimmy Kimmel as opposed to another comedian. And there are some people that say that the best comedian was, um, oh, I can't think of his name now. You look marvelous. That, What's his name? Oh, Billy Crystal. Everyone's saying Billy, Billy Crystal, Crystal yeah. was the funniest. Yeah. You know, he had the yeah. best opening monologues. And I'm not saying he was or he wasn't. And we all have our favorites, just like we yeah. have our own favorite ice cream flavors. But the yeah. question being is, yes, there was a brand new, the theater was beautiful. The design was great, but. It certainly feels like the same old complete with still. Yeah. How do they go 35 minutes over every year and go, oh, we went over? I don't know. Yeah. You know? Um, so, yeah. I, I think that's just, um, I think it, it, it's the experience that people have. The, the, the audience that's sitting there experiencing it 
probably had the most pain if it was the same thing. But like you said, like Billy Crystal, the one thing I know about Billy Crystal is he was <clears> very quick in connecting with the audience and using that as his reason to, to um, move his show along and accomplish the goal that's set for, for the Oscars, you know what I mean? Which is to get those, get those awards out, um, quick speeches, but at the same time, in between when he got on the mic, he was connecting with Casey, he was connecting with Tony, he was connecting with Brian or John um, in those little so moments. That, that So my question is, how does Tony connect at his yeah. wedding today versus three years ago? So just be honest. If I saw a yeah. video of you from three years ago and one from yeah. Saturday, how different would they be? It would be significantly different. And the, where it would be different is the fact that. Um, what would be different, though? I think I'm a lot more comfortable. You know what I mean? I, I feel a lot more comfortable in front of an audience that I've never met before. And I'm able to make them feel like we're brothers. Just the same way I met you yesterday. I sure. think we connected well. So that well, I think I'm awesome. I'm easy to get along with. I mean, let's be honest. Yeah. I am pretty yeah. spectacular. Yeah, you are. <laughs> so, <laughs> no. so, let, so that uh, Thursday I had an event and they were from Australia. The wedding planner made a comment. And she said, well, this is going to be a tough crowd. And I said, OK, you know, let me see what I can do. And where did it change when when I welcomed them during the dinner reception? When I started, I made sure that I got their attention. I gained their confidence and I and I was likable. Once I was likable, it was so easy to tell them, like, all right, let's give a big round of applause for Mr. and Mrs. Whatever. OK, now let's get everybody standing. They were following my directions because they felt that they sensed my confidence. Right. Okay. When, when so, people sense your confidence, that's where people. So will then, listen. the introduction you did on Saturday mm -hmm. would sound different than the introduction that you did three years ago. Yes, because I think it would be a lot more relaxed and smooth and more, um, you know, a lot more genuine than a rehearsed. Uh, you know, I'm not doing like, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Casey and Mrs. Jody, whatever you know. Um, I try to be as, as married I, I, off. Yeah, there you go. I, I try to be I, I try to be as natural as possible where they almost feel like I'm just their friends talking to them and I'm there to, to uh, make sure they they have a great time. And and I don't I don't do the uh, I don't do anything cheesy like, you know, I you know, I won't try to set it up to make them. I not I, I make things organic. I try to make sure that everything I do is natural. So I don't force like, OK, tonight we're here because we want to be able to express our love to Mr. and Mrs. So could you please join me? I, I don't like to do that. I like to be, I like to observe <coughs> and talk, talk to the couples and figure out what they want to do, you know? And from there, you know, I'll, I'll deliver the style they want, you know? Okay. Cause some, of, Cause some of them just want you to shut up. They just want you to play music. Right. You, know, so. you speak and be to uh, spoken to, you know? I think so. you may have just asked your answer David's question. He said, do you MC? Um, I do. Do you MC and event or talk between songs? I think that he means like you're, you're bantering. Um, do you banter a lot in between songs or like, no. are, you, are you pushing the crowd to sing along with the words, clap their hands to the beats? Uh, if yeah. I have to, yes, I can, I can, uh, <clears throat> I can move them along and know when to stop it. Right. Cause you could do that, but you got to know when to stop because if you do it too much, um, they get irritated. And if you don't so, do it enough, they sometimes you lose the crowd. So you got to know, you got to know how to read the audience. So I'm, gotcha. I'm, I try to be careful about doing that. Cause sometimes there's couples that don't want you to talk in the microphone, just mix. Right. Right. And a lot of times your mixing will do the talking because if you're a good DJ, your mixing will speak volumes without okay. a doubt. Gotcha. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Am I supposed to look at? Am I supposed to look at like the uh, comments? I don't know. I've been know. I've been covering the comments for you. Okay, thank you. It's your first time. It's all good. I've been flipping yeah. back and forth from Facebook. Facebook's yeah. pretty quiet tonight. We got David and Jody asking questions. Okay, David. Jody, Jody told me that I wish that uh, she was married to me. So, uh, um, Jody. not the case, you? Jody. Not the case. <laughs> Jody, you so, would be a lucky love woman. you, but not in that way. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, Jody wants to know: Do you allow your couples to pick their own music? How like absolutely? How 
Yeah. Of <laughs> so how much how much feedback how much feedback do you give them? Uh, I give them. I, I provide them with a music planner and they could choose their music. It, it, okay. So when I, when I, when I do that, that's not my, that's not my scapegoat goat rather to say, well, they didn't dance because you gave me the music choice. I use that as a roadmap. I, you know, music that you're suggesting, I will, I've, I've done a music list where they gave it to me and I played, I tried to play it. It wasn't working. So I just trusted my gut instinct and I started playing music that I felt was going to work and it worked, but they didn't come back to me and say, Hey, you didn't play our song. I mean, um, the bottom line is people are dancing, right? Uh, and you mix it with the music that they really like, even though it's not very good. You got to know when to add it. You know what I mean? It's like salt and pepper. You know? I get it. So, yeah. So, yeah, so I try uh, to do that. Jody, Jody's got another question for you. Don Ho is very friendly. I do a lot of Hawaiian weddings here in Vegas. They are touchy-feely. They're very mm-hmm. touchy-feely. Are you a touchy-feely guy? No. Huh? No. <laughs> no. So I wouldn't no. have to worry about you trying to hug me if I saw you in Mobile Beat or anything. No, I I, I would do that. I would hug you. I That's because I'm a huggable guy. What about yeah. Jody? Would you would you hug Jody? I would kiss her. You would kiss her? I think yeah. her husband Pat might have an issue with it. I will hug him and kiss him. <laughs> wow. That's that's yeah. interesting. That's Hawaii. Yeah, Hawaii's like that. Yeah, we we're we're a loving island, you know what I mean? Well, uh, and I think that's what she was just asking. Yeah, I think we would. really Jody just wants to uh, find a reason to come mm-hmm. out to Hawaii and hug uh, Alex O'Laughlin from uh, from uh, Hawaii Five O. <laughs> I think that's the whole thing. She's just yeah. trying to yeah. fit into the culture. So very easy to do. You just go to Whole Foods and you'll see him there. Oh, really? You see that? Oops. <laughs> yeah, well, that's where you'll you find him. So, Whole Foods in Kahala. <laughs> Whole Foods in where? Kahala. What is Kahala? Kahala, Kahala is an area in Hawaii. It's like on the east side of the island where a lot of the stars and a lot of the uh, um, people that like to golf. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hang out. Gotcha. You hear that, Jody? You, now you know where to stalk him. So, Kahala. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. So you, she'll be on a plane tomorrow if you tell her, like, Dwayne Johnson hangs out in Hawaii because he's Samoan, uh, right? So yeah, is he, is we we even island? see the dog out here. The dog he'll be walking around. <laughs> so dog oh, the that's right. I'm like, who the hell is the dog? I'm thinking dog of the bounty dog. hunter. See that yeah, you I could mean, hug dog the bounty hunter, Jody. There you go. Maybe yeah. he could pretend to handcuff you or something. Oh gosh. So <clears throat> uh, Dave wants to know what quest, uh, what music genres are in your uh collection like what are you playing Uh, what would is there is there a big musical difference because let's face it you go down south into the southern states into kentucky and north carolina you're probably playing more rap and country yeah so is there anything specific that's like hawaii like again with the Asian community in guam like are you playing hits that are popular in guam or, or is it just is everything just american guam and hawaii is very similar as far as the music they they have their genre, which is Hawaiian music, and it's a like it's almost like country, but <clears throat> country music um, redone in a more reggae style music. But I don't play that stuff because a lot of the weddings that I do, they're from New York or California, so I'm playing top forty. I'm playing the you know a little bit of EDM, you know, and all the top forty stuff that comes out. And sometimes you'll get some bachata, salsa, merengue. Um, but a lot of times you just got to know how to like weave all that, those genres together and be able to have a solid evening, you know, cause out here we end at 10. So weddings stop at 10 PM at night here. 10 so, o'clock at night. Yeah. And what time do they start? Uh, we'll try to start at six, but six to 10 and we're done. So Four your DJ hours. has to be able to get Four on and like hours. knock out mixes, you know, he's <clears throat> Mix, mix, mix. Okay, all right. This song's not working. Mix it out. Mix another song out. You know, Four you just gotta you gotta be proactive when you when you're out here. Because if you sit there and you play Brick House for five minutes, you just wasted five minutes if nobody's dancing. <laughs> uh, if you're playing Brick House just about anywhere, you've wasted five minutes. No <laughs> offense, Lionel Richie. You know, but uh, that's sad because you know somehow play that funky music is going to be the next five minutes of it. So, <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> 
And then DJs will all say, when I do it, I'm redefining the DJ. Totally different than what you're used to. Yeah. So, um, so Jody's going to be in, uh, in Hawaii in October. So she says she hopes. Okay. I thought she was going to look you up. She's actually more interested in the guy that plays, uh, Steve, uh, Steve, uh, McGarrett. So, so maybe you two connect on Facebook and then, uh, yeah, you, you can take her to the uh, Whole Foods where uh, yeah. Steve hangs out, and you can keep cash ready for her to bail her out of jail after she like grabs him by the leg and won't release and goes from yeah. there. Dog the bounty hunter will give us the bail. There you go. So so that works. Good luck with that, Jody. So, but really, so let me ask you a question because you said your weddings are four hours, which I find intriguing. Weddings mm-hmm. here are actually six. So. We have an hour of cocktail, depending on the, the venue, an hour and a half to two hours of dinner, which includes speeches, blessings, things like that. So, and then we typically have like three hours of solid dancing. So my question oh, for awesome. you is, what's, what's the flow like in Hawaii? Like cocktail hours, a full hour, a half hour? Tell me what a wedding, walk me through a wedding reception, a typical wedding reception. Uh, maybe a ceremony around four okay. and cocktail hour will follow. And then it'll probably hit dinner around six. Um, it's a long then, cocktail hour. Yeah. It, so it's weird. It, it, and the reason why it's long is because we have sunsets here that brides are taking advantage of mm. and they want to maximize their time to take photos. So they're out on the shoreline taking photos with their photographer and videographer. So cocktail hour runs long because of that reason and and they'll wait till that sun sets and then they'll come in and then they'll reset for dinner you know and that that's when it's our turn to do our thing but um sunset dictates our our timeline out here in hawaii that's a, okay. that's a fact so we've had six hours of cocktail hour because the bride's taking pictures <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> and then what what happens then the cocktail uh, we, hours over are people seated? Like, are most of your dinners plated? Are they food stations, buffet? What's the story? Yeah, we do all three types. We have uh, food stations, we have plated dinner, uh, and then What's we have the majority? buffet. What's majority the- event uh, would be plated. Okay. Yeah, and so the hotel plated. property yeah, would be plated. Three course meals or four course. Okay. Plated. A program uh, in between <clears throat> sets, dancing. Uh, any any given chance so is dancing in between courses or is it yeah. okay so then, East Coast style yeah I mean, so then they traditionally cocktail hours over mm-hmm. and then what up tempo music is played while they're then, going in and yeah. then what do they do the introductions do they do yep. so they it's do grand entrance people come in sit down introduction slash grand entrance slash grand march then what? First dance. Sometimes or, they'll do first dance. Okay, first dance. Got it. Yeah. Then after the first dance, they'll um, sometimes the groom will come up and do a welcome speech. But then okay. after that, they'll Got be it. seated. And then uh, I'll do a little bit of the house rules and just kind of get everything out of the way. And then uh, introduce the uh, banquet captain or the person in charge for the for the evening. And then let them take over the uh, the dinner service. And okay. And uh, you know, come back after each set so when they pull the food like the first course where they drop salads um and they're all settled um i'll probably do i'll have the the staff pull and then i'll do maybe a couple of speeches and as soon as it's done i'll go back right into music and then they'll drop the main entree you know okay then after they pull the main entree uh we'll do like father daughter mother son dance and when do Uh, they cut the wedding cake uh, they'll do that usually in the front end, like, uh, or actually, no, uh, we do it like around dessert time. So the third on the third where right before dessert, they usually do the cut cake, the cake cutting. They cut the cake and, and then the venue takes it away and cuts it up. Or is it put out on like a, on yeah. a dessert table? Uh, there's dessert table and, um, they also cut the cake up. Yeah. Gotcha. So the you budgets sound little, here. sound a little confused about what's going on. <laughs> they, they, um, <laughs> uh, they, uh, cut the, the cake. Uh, you know, sometimes it's just based on budget, right? So a lot of the couples here, they can afford to cut. Because uh, if you cut, uh, if the hotel or the venue is cutting cake, they're charging per slice, right? I'm sure they do okay. that in the mainland. So 
uh, if they do that, um, that's all a budget thing, you know? So to so, save money, everybody just reaches in and grabs a handful and we're good. If they're going to do it that way. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So David says it's true, Jody, that uh, he has been to the island and most people are from the mainland and the jet lag hits you by nine or 10 and you're done for the night. So is that That's true? Right. Yeah, it's very true. So the uh, howlies can't hang. Is that what you're saying? Well, if you can outdo this DJ, then, you know, you, you're pretty impressive. So because <laughs> uh, you got to you got to be able to uh, what I like to see. It's, it's very funny is that I'll set up the dance floor. They're ready to go. And it's like our hour in they're still going two hours in they're still going three <coughs> hours they're going and then like in the fourth hour when it, you know already that it's like three or four in the morning in the mainland you can see them just like staring got it <laughs> they're done yeah, it's true yeah it's done i feel that way with vegas sometimes yeah yeah exactly that's exactly that that yeah. that feeling is is real it's a real okay. feeling right there all right jody says since your weddings are destinations what form of communication works best do you Skype? Do you find yourself doing emails? Like what's the best way for you to communicate with your out of town, uh, brides and grooms and such? Um, yeah, I, I, I try to, I try to streamline them into the uh, website first and a lot of them do. Um, so you've got so like online planning tools. I don't, I took that off. I used to have it and I took it off because, um, cause it made too I, much sense, made it easier for the yeah, bride and groom. It was just, it was just yeah, I don't know why I took it off. I just felt like that. I'm going to give you one here. website. You ready? Okay. www.djeventplanner.com. I got it. And the money. I have okay. it. I have it. It's just not on my website. Well, <laughs> he's still spinning with cassette tapes, too, guys. I got news for you. <laughs> Clearly, no. he's making $75 a wedding. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> no. So. Um, I have it. Uh, I'm, you know, I, I like, it's just, just preference. A lot of that stuff is preference. You know? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Dave's got a question. I love that. For that website is great. Uh, let me endorse that website. That site is phenomenal. They are, oh, they are so It's a ringing on. endorsement from a guy who doesn't use it. Yeah. You hear that Anything on. else that you own that you don't okay. use? Okay. So here's a good example, like Yelp, right? So Yelp yep. called me, uh, Wedding wire called me and wedding wire said, Well, you gotta spend this and spend this, spend, spend, spend. And I was like, you know what? I'm not I'm gonna stop sending people to your website to give me reviews because you're taking my work, my reviews, and you're making money off me. So I'm gonna stop. So yeah. that's what I did. You know, we true. could do a whole show about online reviews. Yeah. And yeah. To so be honest true. with you, it's uh it's unfortunately it's a necessary evil. It is, and, yeah. Uh, and that's today, the reason why I, I, I just I leave it the way it is. I make sure I check it every once in a while, make sure that it's updated and that the links link back to my website. That's it. But I'm not okay. going to, I'm not going to go dump money on. I'm sorry. I'm not going to dump money. You're on not going to advertise on it, no but way. You, no you way. still are directing the yeah. brides to review you on it. Right. Or do they just no. do it if they feel like it? Yeah. They do it if they feel like it. Okay. Yeah. So the thing here is that, uh, Tony, um, doesn't use online planning tools. Doesn't work very hard for reviews. Doesn't do any bridal shows. Um, we're lucky that we got him out of bed to do this interview at all, folks. I mean, <laughs> so, <clears throat> you know, he's just hanging. Uh, he's got his surfboard underneath him. He's ready. Oh, no, yeah. I, it, yeah. So I think, you know, if people are trying to understand how to become highly recommended by your venue, you just have to be, uh, you got to pay attention here. Here's what, we have to understand about the hotel. Well, here, hang, hang on one second. Cause it might tie yeah. in. Jody asked, how do you connect with a new vendor you want to do business with? So this all might tie together really well. So, okay. 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 Yeah. So you want me to answer that question? Yes. Yeah. 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 I figured okay, it yeah, kind okay. of tied in with the way that you started doing business. Yeah. So, um, there's always going to be a need that needs to be filled. And, we got to remember those people that work um, nine to five at the hotels, whether they work in sales and catering, they have a quota to meet. They have a goal to meet. Right. So when they book a client, let's say if they book this person January, 2019 and January um, 1st, right? <coughs> January 1st or January. Okay. Let's make it January 15, 2019. 
January 15, 2019, right? Okay. Once the hotel books that client, they sign the contract and everything is, is good to go. That person in catering has to move on to the next sale. Right. They cannot, they cannot babysit 115, 19, who is like a year out. But there right. are brides, there are brides that are out there who will keep calling them every day, every other day, every week. I hear this sure. from uh, different- We all have that. Yeah. And they don't realize that their time is being consumed. So what a lot of the hotels out here realize, like, oh, my gosh, Tony is a full-time DJ. Let's send it to him. <laughs> okay. So, so you're happens- the problem solver. Yeah, they they realize. I mean, I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna share a story with you. I had one hotel who had an issue with a client, and the client was gonna sue the hotel. So what the what the hotel did was they called me and they say, "Hey, we have this client. Here's the the information. We really need your help with this because we really need to bring her back to a more positive uh, environment because she was like, I'm suing you guys. So they they brought me in. They hired me. She loved me. And my goal was to make sure I, I repaired that relationship with the hotel and let her understand why the hotel doesn't call her immediately or why the hotel is not responding to her emails. And at the end of the day, that client was super happy. But when, when hotels or your catering managers know that you can do services like that, they're going to think of you first <clears throat> okay. all the time. So on the subject of services, what are your services like? DJ, do you do ceremony systems, I'm assuming? Yes, I do a ceremony. Do you do uh, uplighting? I do uplighting. uplighting. I have, yeah, I have it. Do you do any live entertainment? No, I don't do live. I have friends yeah. that I recommend. I refer them. Okay. Now. What about like monogram? Do you do a... Uh, I could do monogram, yeah. So uh, the way I look at... Do. Yeah, I don't... This is my thought process is, is like, I don't really care to do a monogram. So what I do is I just charge a little more for it so that okay. if they want it, then it's worth my time. <clears throat> so it's that you don't really have like an organized, what's yeah. the word? A menu I with do. it includes it. Uh, yeah. I mean, I do, but I, a lot of the clients, when they're looking, they're just, they're, they're like, oh, we're looking for a DJ. Now, do I upsell them on other things? Like, oh, I didn't know you do uplighting, um, stuff like that. I, I try not to. I just let them know what's available. And then they, they, they can see my menu. And my menu has all the different, you know, uh, options. But you then, tr- why, why don't you try to upsell them? Um, I don't know. Just feel like uh, if they're interested in it, they'll, you know, they'll ask. Okay. Yeah. You're pretty yeah. laid back. You know that, dude? Thanks. So okay. that might be a good or bad thing. But I, I'm, you know, I, yeah, I just okay. feel like whatever works is good no for judgment me. we're all good yeah yeah good lord people are you listening to this no, i'm just kidding <laughs> um dave's got a question um what's uh what's the attire that you wear to most of your weddings in hawaii uh outdoors i i, I definitely would do button up uh outdoors uh black slacks um indoors no, no shorts I, no shorts no, how do you no. feel about shorts when you're interviewing a celebrity that okay? Like if you're at a national DJ convention and you're Wearing interviewing shorts. a celebrity in a pair of shorts. Now they're nice shorts, brand new, black okay. golf shorts. Is that inappropriate? Know. No. I don't know. I don't brand know. new, clean tennis shoes. No, it so? wasn't appropriate. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I I, I I made that mistake a few years ago, and I've yet to live it down. So um, I just okay. thought uh, I'd bring you it back. You live and learn, man. Mm-hmm. Bring it back. I'm thinking about bringing it. I was hoping you might say that you DJ in shorts because that would be a beautiful thing, but obviously not. <laughs> not, now, not a chance. You have that gorgeous background behind you. Yeah. Are most of the venues that you work at have a venue like that? Or are you honestly, are some of your hotels, even though Hawaii is beautiful, are you inside of a vanilla box? Like, is it a beige ballroom? Like, you know, it, you got some, yeah. There's some of that like that. I, I think like if you, you uh, here's what happens is like you can see it in Vegas as well. Like if you if you look at downtown uh, or <coughs> the, a lot of times what happens is um, 
you can go 10 years here in Hawaii working, 10 years nonstop. You will not realize that your carpet is becoming dingy. Your paint is faded because you go there every day, every day. You do it for a year in, year out. You don't realize that for 10 years you've been you've been working here in the 90s and now it's 2018 and, and the venue still looks like back in the 90s. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's because it's so busy out here. Yeah. Yeah. So I've noticed that. I made that observation. I was like, oh my God, this place looks like, you know, like if you go into a, a lot of the hotels in uh, Waikiki, it's like yeah. you're walking into... It's like the 80s. You're stuck in the 80s. No joke. It's crazy. So architecturally, they're stuck in the 80s. Well, in yeah, because they don't realize it because they're so busy working. <clears throat> Got it. Okay. No offense, but that's some truth to that. You know? Gotcha. Jody wants to know what the secret is to being one of the most referred DJs in Hawaii. Is it just your, your cool URL, your www.thedjhawaii? No. Um, you could have the best website. You could have the best, the best uh, ULR. You could have the best keywords, uh, but you still got to back it up with service, you know. And and I'm not talking about, you know, I'm not talking about. I'm going to use this word. I'm going to go on the edge and say it's not about kissing people's ass. It's it's <clears throat> about being genuine about yourself and uh, your standards on how you deliver your service. Just because I do 100 weddings a year doesn't mean I'm going to go to my next wedding saying, oh, it's another wedding. I'm just going to go do it. You know, I care about those couples. I want to make sure that I understand what they're expecting out of me. Yeah. You know, so every day is a different day. So right. and I, That's I, why take, I, hate, I hate when DJs use the word gig. Oh, I can't stand that. Yeah, well, I've got a know. gig. It's not a gig. It's somebody's wedding. It's somebody's bar mitzvah. Yeah, I, I so. seriously. Like, <clears throat> and, and I'm, I'm a I. You know, I'm very, I mean, I'm, I'm very passionate about what I do. And, and if, if I, if I don't feel like something is right, I'm going to speak up. You know what I mean? I, okay. So that's Got pretty it. much it. Yeah. I All think right. it's friendship too. Another, another key is um, getting to know your, your people outside of just weddings, uh, being able <clears> to take them out to dinner or just go. And, you know, I, I did something that really worked well last, probably like 2014, um, I used to uh, do like mix and mingles where I would invite the hotels to come down. They would all come down. And I, and my goal was, I, I told them, I said, I'm doing this because I want you to meet the person at the Hilton Hawaiian village. I want you to meet the person at the four seasons. I want you to meet, because if you're a book, you can refer the person and you have a face to the name, you know, sure. and they love that idea. Good. And, and that's how a lot of the hotels. Now they, they kind of uh, help each other. You know, they, gotcha. You know, yeah. So, so David's had a question. Are most of your ceremonies outside or inside? Like, is the weather so, ever so inclement that you you're stuck to go inside, or are they really pushing the background that you have behind you? Um, no, they're they're pushing the background behind you. It's like uh, like I'm gonna show you. Uh, sorry, like this angle right here of the the. Let me see if I can give you a good view right there. Look at that view. It's a ceremony. Let me see if I can. Let me see if I could. Uh, Okay. Yeah, I, can, I think. Yeah, I can. Am I losing signal? No. No. Yeah, you're so good. That, you're good. Okay. Oh yeah. So this is ceremony. Yeah, that's ceremony right there. They're getting ready for uh for today's show, but that's the view right there. So. Very cool. <clears throat> Very so cool. that's what they try to push, and they'll they'll push it till the end if they could. If it's gonna rain, they'll they'll call it like at the last thirty minutes Got because it. they want an outdoor wedding. Sure. Ceremony that is, yeah. All right, so we're not going to see you at Mobile Beat, right? No. Yeah, no. But what about um, Chicago in July? Huh? Huh? I, I'm trying to work that out because my schedule is filling up. But um, I will definitely uh, make plans to go to that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to make it to that show. Um, and tell everyone what show is that? I, I, I forget. I can't remember the name of it. It's called the Mar Marquee. Marquee. That's right. My shameless <laughs> plug with. Uh, no, a minute left to go. <clears throat> hey, yeah, hats off to you. Um, I love your your vision and your goal with that. Uh, it's time to you know disrupt the market, and you're doing a great job of that. Um, well, I'm trying. Yeah, uh, so much so that I'm not allowed to go to Mobile Beat. So what? Are you serious? Yeah, I've been asked oh, not no. to step foot on the property. That's so, okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't get it. So I mean, I think they've got a lot to offer, but just like everybody. Yeah. 
I'm going to try and build a better mousetrap. And that's, yeah. You know, I wish well, them nothing but the best. So, yeah. and I'll be at Photo Booth Expo next week. And here's the other cool part <clears throat> even though Tony um, won't be there, Brian and I are going to be, we are taping. John, have you, are you back, John? Are you here? Yep. Can you hear me? Okay. Hey, John. Are you going to come on air? Or are we just going to look uh, at the I'm, DJ I'm, news? It takes, a, it takes a second for me to. Okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, there's yeah. John. So, John, I don't want to mess anything up. Yep. So, Tuesday, time to be determined, but we'll throw it up on our social media. Yep. We're going to be pre-taping our Thursday show because I'll be traveling. John will be traveling. Um, Brian is actually leaving Vegas to go. He's DJing South by Southwest. So he'll be at the concert. <clears throat> um, so we can't do a live show. So we're going to be actually taping our show at the marquee booth if there's room, which we'll make sure there's enough room. It should be. Yeah. Um, and what are we looking? Tuesday afternoon ish? Sometime in the afternoon is what I'm thinking because there is going to be, there should be some time in that uh, window. Because I'm sure once it opens up Tuesday morning, that the exhibit hall is going to be crazy busy. So maybe probably later in the afternoon. I'm guessing so, yeah. After things have calmed down. Yep. Got it. Okay, so come by the uh, the Marquee Show booth. Say hello. Um, try to disrupt uh, anything. Jody's got a bodyguard for me. Nice. Jody, I'm good Like at, at uh, the, what do you call it, show. I'm good at photo booth, and <clears throat> I've put it out there before, too. Ryan and the Mobile Beat staff is more than welcome to purchase a ticket from me and come to Marquee in Chicago. I've got... No animosity there whatsoever. Um, so so we're good to go that way. <coughs> um, as most of you know, I'm going to be giving out Marquee Show t-shirts, which I've got. Let's see. Let's do one. Let me see it. Let me see it. <clears throat> let's see. Can we focus it in? Yeah, you can. Is it focused? I can't see. Don't need to see. Yep, it looks good. That. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. What a yeah. slogan. It's a nice slogan. <clears throat> so we've got... Um, and, and that's the whole thing. You know, you go to DJ shows to learn how to do, how to be different. You know, you're doing the same thing. And that's why kind of, we talked about the Oscars. It was, a, it's the same thing. And yep. so, so there's that. So we're going to be shipping these bad boys out tomorrow. They should be arriving on Monday and uh, we'll be giving them out Monday night. Um, I speak on Monday afternoon at photo booth expo. I think at like one thirty on bridal show gold. Monday night, we've got a party at Marquee Nightclub, sponsored by Photo Booth Association, PV, ADJA, and myself. Get there early, like 10 o'clock. There's an open bar from 11 to 12. I mean, when have you heard of an open bar, Tony, in a Vegas that's, nightclub? That's insane. Yeah. It's industry night, though, at Marquee, so it's going to be a busy day, so I'm going to tell you to get there early. <clears throat> um, I'll be in the booth all day Tuesday, Wednesday. I have a, uh, a workshop that's going to be about retooling your marketing and uh, doing a make marketing makeover. And um, there's a fee for it. You can find it on Photo Booth Association's Facebook page. But all of the money that we collect from it goes to uh, my annual holiday toy drive. So you're going to be helping kids, getting some education. I know that Brian is going to be at Mobile Beat with uh, Vibo. His new, the new app that he's involved with, which is oh, nice. pretty darn cool. Um, he's got a, if you take, if you check out Brian's Facebook page, he's got a little short demo video about it. So it's, uh, it's very cool. And then uh, that's it. <clears throat> so once again, did I miss anything, John? Did I, think I hit you've all covered, the high points? You covered the bases and we'll be okay. having fun in Vegas next week. There we go. Vegas. So yeah. Vegas will be a good time. And, I think uh, Vegas is the ninth island for Hawaii, something like that. Island? Something like that, yeah. yeah. I understand. <laughs> because of all the sand, there's just no water around it. Because everybody from Hawaii goes to Vegas. Seriously, right. no joke. Wow. Maybe just yeah. Asians like to gamble. Did you ever think about that? Yeah. Is that That's possible? What it's about. That's life. Or, or they go for the buffet. <laughs> yeah. One or the yeah. other. I'm going to stop while I'm ahead. <laughs> quit, quit, quit. So, all right. <laughs> So thank you again, everybody, for tuning in. Yeah, thank you very much, everybody. We're going to talk about what a train wreck this show was off the air. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so thanks a lot, everybody. I get in Sunday night. John, when are you in? Sunday night. Sunday night. So, uh, yeah, we will see you guys next week in Viva Las Vegas. Good night, everybody. Aloha.
Tonight's DJ and TV show is sponsored in part by Electro Voice, DJ Event Planner, ADJ, NLFX Professional, Promo Only, Newmark. and DJ and TV Insider.